2020 may not be the greatest year in general, but it does celebrate the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. As you've likely seen, Nintendo has announced many special Mario products to commemorate this occasion, one of which is a handheld device that plays the original Super Mario Bros. game. This retro-themed device isn't inspired by anything Mario-related, though. It's modeled after the Game & Watch. Released in 1980, the original Game & Watch was one of the first handheld gaming platforms on the market, featuring Gunpei Yokoi's Mr. Game & Watch character. In the Smash series, Mr. Game & Watch got off to a rough start. His debut in Melee was surprising and unexpected, but his moveset was literally broken. With a shield too small for his body and lacking the ability to L cancel every aerial, these flaws are highly abused in competitive play, making Game & Watch an unviable, lower tier character. Brawl fixed these issues, and the 2D fighter established himself as a fairly viable character in the Wii installment. His hits on cancelling prowess and down throw tech chases gave him some unique strengths in the meta. Smash 4's Game & Watch removed a lot of what made the character solid in Brawl, but his down throw combos, amazing dash attack, and safe up smash left him somewhat dangerous among the weaker characters in the meta. In Smash Ultimate, Mr. Game Watch received the most changes since transitioning from melee to brawl. Many of his moves, most notably forward air and up air, were completely changed with new animations and properties. These changes, along with differences in his playstyle from Smash 4, initially led the majority of top players to consider Mr. Game & Watch one of the worst characters in the game. Meister, one of Smash 4's premier Game & Watch players, would see hidden potential in the character, however. You can learn more about Meister in our player bio video about him. But in short, he began making upsets and placing in major tournaments with solo Game & Watch. Meister is now ranked number 6 in the world, and is almost solely responsible for one of the largest tier jumps of any character in Smash history. And if you want to make that tier jump yourself, you can start by subscribing to the Pro Guide's YouTube channel. These days, Mr. Game & Watch is regarded as a very viable character, although not everyone is ready to consider him a top tier. This brings us to our question of the day. Do you think Game & Watch is high tier or top tier? Let us know your thoughts and stay tuned to see our judgment. Have you checked out ProGuides.com? Our website has a breakdown of every character in the game, and that's not all. We offer benefits such as live classes where you can play with the pros, pro courses taught by top players, and the one and only InstaPro platform which connects you to coaches instantly. So, how did Maester prove to everyone that Game & Watch wasn't just a low tier? What strengths did he discover in the character, and what weaknesses still hold him back? For starters, Mr. Game & Watch possesses arguably the greatest defensive option in the entire game. His up B out of shield is frame 3 and covers a large area around him. It's also intangible from frame 5 to 13, so getting anywhere near Game & Watch's shield will put you at a risk of getting hit by this move. If you do get hit, you'll get launched up along with Game & Watch, where he can potentially even combo out of it. This already makes an amazing out of shield option, but it goes one step further. If Game & Watch doesn't hit you with the up B, he's not risking much. His up special doesn't put him in the free fall, and with tricky disjointed aerials and a high aerial acceleration, he'll have little trouble finding his way back to the ground safely. Meister made this move infamous with Game & Watch, and quickly showed the early metagame that you have to respect this character's shield at all times. This only scratches the surface of his strengths. Mr. Game & Watch has one of the best combo games in Smash Ultimate. A neutral air or down throw at low percents can lead to a guaranteed 30-70% to 70 depending on the situation. After this range, he still maintains some simple two-hit combos to tack on additional damage. If the RNG is just right, he can even take your stock sub 20% with a 9 confirm. Where his true combos end, Mr. Game & Watch's advantage state remains dominant. His up air shoots multiple projectiles with low knockback above him. This was originally seen as a major nerf compared to his Smash 4 up air, which was a strong kill option. But in reality, this new aerial is an outstanding juggling tool, filling up the air with pesky hitboxes that make it really tricky to land against. His excellent advantage state will prompt many players to drift off stage in order to escape, but this isn't exactly a good position either. In fact, Mr. Game & Watch is one of the best edge guarders in the game. His disjointed multi-hit back air is not only great in neutral, but applies tons of pressure to offstage opponents. It has very little end lag, so Game & Watch can throw out multiple bears and other options in a single edge guard sequence. It also helps that his up special, which we already mentioned has intangibility on the way up, travels super high and can even KO opponents off the sides. If you're having trouble lining up your back air, Mr. Game & Watch's down air can drop down on opponents with a disjointed hitbox that spikes at the start and remains a decent diagonal kill option until it ends. 
To round off Mr. Game & Watch's stellar advantage state, he has a tricky ledge trapping strategy as well. His neutral special, Chef, can cover every ledge option depending on its angle, even catching opponents who stall on the ledge. If he correctly anticipates the food particles hitting the opponent, the Game & Watch player can then confirm with a dash attack or a forward tilt, even closing out stocks at higher percents. This all culminates in a character with very high reward and very low risk. And this is evident even with his smash attacks. All three of Game & Watch's smash attacks have low end lag and decent shield stun. His up and down smashes are even safe enough to spam in neutral to an extent. Up smash is also invincible, making it a fantastic anti-aerial kill option. And down smash can both two-frame and bury opponents. If you do manage to bury them, a slightly charged forward smash can kill at around 60 or 70% on the ledge. Statistics show that subscribing to pro guides will make you less likely to get buried by a Game & Watch down smash, by the way. So far, Mr. Game & Watch sounds like a pretty broken character, in a good way this time. And he is, but he does have detriments as well. First of all, Game & Watch is one of the lightest characters in the game, so even with his low risk of getting hit, the hits he does take will be more severe. Although his safe smash attacks and reliable edge guarding give him means to KO opponents fairly early, he can struggle to close out stocks at times. He has no throws that kill before absurdly high percents, and his aerials don't pack much of a punch if he's far from the blast zone. This issue is more significant when Mr. Game & Watch himself can be KO'd so early. Also, despite having his fair share of disjoints, Game & Watch has a lot of trouble dealing with sword characters, who happen to be very strong in the metagame. This is often a huge reason why some players don't think as highly of the character, claiming that he can be hard countered by characters like Ike. This makes some sense, because powerful range characters like Ike can prey on both of Game & Watch's major weaknesses, range and weight. At higher levels though, this really isn't as big of a factor as it may seem. If it was, you wouldn't see Meister making top 8 in so many offline majors. Looking at the results a bit more, Meister actually placed second at the last offline major, Frostbite 2020. He lost only to MKLeo, who has proven to be his major bracket demon in just about any matchup. In addition to taking first at Nightmare on Smashville and multiple online events, Meister's top 8 placings at majors are too many to list. Even if Meister was the only Game & Watch player in the world, the abundance of these results proves the consistency of the character. He isn't though, and other Game & Watch players have made great strides as well. World number 7 Zachary uses Game & Watch as a secondary, winning the Big House 9 with heavy use of the character. Reggie Shikimi also maintains strong results in Mexico with solo Game & Watch. Mr. Game & Watch's reception is mixed among top players. Tweak only places the character in high tier, and interestingly, Samsora does as well. This may come off as a surprise considering Samsora's abysmal record against Meister's Game & Watch. On the other hand, MKLeo is nearly undefeated by Meister or any Game & Watch player, yet he considers the character top tier. Looking further, Mars considers him high tier, but Esam considers him top tier. It seems that there's a relatively equal balance of options among the best players in the world. But if you look at the results, Mr. Game & Watch points towards a clear objective conclusion. The results match Game & Watch's amazing strengths. Furthermore, he's very meta-relevant, countering top tiers such as Pikachu, Peach, and Mario. All things considered, we can't sell him short any longer. Mr. Game & Watch is top tier. How do you feel about Mr. Game & Watch and which character would you like to see next? Let us know and be sure to subscribe to ProGuides and click the bell so you never miss another upload.